Dear Chairman, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to be able to present the final results of our randomized controlled trial. So disclosures of all our co-authors. So in the beginning of the millennium, it has been shown that infliximab is able to induce and maintain clinical remission in IVD patients. Now, meanwhile, different retrospective studies have shown a link between infliximab trough levels and different clinical outcomes. For those unfamiliar with the term trough level, this is actually the lowest concentration of drug in a patient's serum just before the next administration. So we hypothesized that by treating patients too trough, we could achieve better clinical outcomes. And as a matter of fact, different retrospective studies have tried to find an optimal therapeutic cutoff that links to uh, a therapeutic outcome. And if you look into literature, these studies come up with levels between an interval of three and seven microgram per ml. Therefore, we regarded this interval as a window of opportunity to further optimize treatment with infliximab. So our aim was to investigate prospectively the clinical outcome of stratified dosing through therapeutic drug monitoring, thereby focusing on efficacy, drug-related side effects, and cost effectiveness. So let me guide you through the study outline. Patients that were on infliximab maintenance therapy and had a stable clinical response were screened for eligibility. If eligible, all patients were dose optimized based on their levels to reach a level between three to seven microgram per ml. This was in the optimization phase. Then patients could be randomized to either dosing based on clinical symptoms or CRP, or dosing solely based on infliximab trough levels. The duration of the maintenance phase was 52 weeks before patients reached the primary endpoint, which was defined as the rate of clinical and biological remission in both treatment groups. So to those optimize the patients in, during the optimization phase and to keep them within the optimal window in the level-based group, we use this TAXIT algorithm. I will not go into detail, but uh, keep in mind that if patients on the right-hand side had too high levels, those patients were those de-escalated, mainly by increasing the interval between infusions by two weeks. On the left-hand side, you can see that if patients had too low levels, those patients were those escalated, mainly by decreasing the interval between infusions. On the uh, farther left-hand side, you can see that we will only measure antibodies to infliximab if infliximab trough levels were undetectable. If these antibody levels were too high, patients were stopped and excluded from the study. However, if patients had low antibodies, we would dose optimize them. So this is a crucial slide showing the patient disposition throughout the study. In total, we have screened 275 IBD patients, of which 12 patients were ineligible because six patients had high antibody status despite being stable clinical responders. 44% of the patients had levels within the optimal interval. On the left side, you can see that 29% of the patients who were eligible uh, had too low levels. Those patients were those escalated. And on the right-hand side, you can see that 27% of the patients had too high levels, and those patients were those de-escalated. In general, 251 patients achieved levels within the optimal interval during the optimization phase, and those patients were randomized. 123 to clinically-based dosing and 128 to level-based dosing. So here you can see some of the baseline characteristics of the patients who uh, were included in the optimization phase. So the average age of the patients was 40 years. The average uh, disease duration was almost 14 years. And I would like to stress here that the average duration on infliximab treatment was five years. So if we now look at the results of the optimization phase, thereby focusing on the subpopulation of patients who had too low levels at time of screening, here we saw that dose escalation based on levels, and that you can see on the left uh, graph, that this resulted in a significant increase in proportion of patients achieving uh, clinical remission in uh, Crohn's disease patients. Remission was based on Harvey Bradshaw index, and meanwhile, on the right-hand side, you can see that this resulted in a significant drop in C-reactive protein levels, also in Crohn's disease patients. We did not observe uh, these effects for the ulcerative colitis patients. 
On the other hand, if we look at the subpopulation of patients who had too high levels at a time of screening, so those patients were those de-escalated. Again, on the left you can see the proportion of patients in remission before and after optimization, both in patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, where we did not observe any significant uh, effect of dose reduction. And on the right-hand side, you can see the effect on a C-reactive protein of a uh, level of both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis patients. Now, if we look at the result of the randomized maintenance phase, which is the primary endpoint, we did not observe any additional effect to continue level-based dosing over, continu over clinically-based dosing of infliximab. As you can see, the proportion of patients in clinical remission is equal in both treatment groups. However, in an exploratory analysis, we did observe that uh, looking at the secondary endpoint, which was the need for an intervention, Significantly more patients, as you can see from this Kaplan-Meier curve, of the clinically-based group needed an intervention over time compared to patients from the level-based group, respectively 17.3% versus only 5.5%. If we then looked at the occurrence of adverse events, we did not observe any significant difference in proportion of patients uh, who suffered an uh, adverse events. However, we did observe a trend towards significance for the occurrence of um, acute infusion reactions in those patients from the clinically based dosing group. Now, I would like to uh, say a few words uh, about the cost effectiveness uh, that we investigated in both treatment groups. Uh, so when we look at the total population of patients that was uh, randomized, we first looked at the difference in quality adjusted life years between both groups. And as you can see, they were uh, quite similar. We also looked at the difference in cost. This is the cost per patient per year in euros. I'm sorry for that. And, um, so this is annually, and on the right-hand side, you can see the incremental cost-effectiveness ratio, and this tells us something about the cost-effectiveness of both treatment strategies. And here you can actually see that uh, for the overall population, it was not more cost-effective to treat patients during the randomized maintenance phase based on levels uh, compared to clinically-based dosing. However, if we uh, subdivide into different populations based on the optimization uh, during the optimization phase based on uh, the levels, we did observe that continuing level-based optimization is cost-effective in those patients uh, who had too low levels uh, at time of screening, especially those who were ATI negative. On the other hand, we did not observe that the level-based treatment strategy was more cost-effective in those patients who did not have an intervention during the optimization phase or those patients who were those de-escalated. So dear chairman, dear ladies and gentlemen, we would like to conclude that after the uh, level-based dose optimization, we did not see an additional effect of continued level-based dosing versus clinically-based dosing of infliximab. From the optimization phase, we uh, concluded that dose optimization of infliximab based on trough levels results in a more efficient use of drug and is also cost-effective. From the maintenance phase in exploratory analysis, we observed that patients from the clinically-based group were more likely to need rescue therapy as compared with patients from the level-based group. So therefore, we would recommend to those optimized patients who are on infliximab maintenance therapy to achieve levels within the interval of 3 and 7 microgram per ml and to reevaluate the levels after six months or when patients lose response. I would like to acknowledge all people that made this study possible and you for your attention. Thank you very much.